I think this topic works pretty well in the context of these past couple of videos that I've done where we talked about studies of these mock trials where mock jurors found defendants to be more guilty more often and for longer prison sentences if they defended their home with an AR-15. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But I think one of the most common questions that I get, especially from students in my concealed handgun courses, friends, or even family members at Thanksgiving, is why would you use an AR-15 to defend your home? We talk about that today. Well, I mean, you don't need to defend anything from anyone, honestly. I mean, you ever gotten fed up with your life, the constant backtalk from your spouse, firefly in the expanse, getting canceled, going to the law firm every day, reading viewer comments, living in the same timeline as Blippi and Taylor Swift and Logan Paul. You could just run away. I mean, why not? Here you go, home intruders. Here's the keys. By the way, that cat shits on the floor every day, no matter how clean the litter box is. The air filters need to be changed. And by the way, if you don't pay the mortgage on the 15th, there's an acceleration clause and they'll foreclose on the house. Have a great life, asshole. But for those of us who aren't ready to start over in a Central American country with a low cost of living and women who would only walk in front of you if you're strolling through a minefield, the AR-15 is literally the best conceivable choice for home defense. You AR-15 guys out there are saying, James, isn't it obvious? No, you are taking your personal experience behind Eugene Stoner's masterwork for granted. You have to remember that, believe it or not, there actually are Americans out there, people in the United States of America who have never taken a ride on the greatest invention of the late 20th century. It's like never driving a car or never hearing a song by Hall & Oates. Almost un-American. On that note, let's start with the obvious, not obvious con. Obvious because you're all expecting me to say it based on the intro and my recent videos, but not obvious because when I made the AR-15 will send you to prison video a few weeks back, I was shocked, shocked to find out that in a series of mock trials back in 2009, with all the facts and circumstances being the same for all of the mock trials other than the firearm used, homeowners who used an AR-15 to defend themselves from a burglar were almost 50% more likely to be found guilty and were sentenced to prison terms up to four times longer than homeowners who used a handgun or a hunting rifle or a Mini-14. Obviously, there are a lot of details I'm leaving out for the sake of brevity. I've already done the video. Just go back and watch it. It's been popular. You're probably going to like it. So number one con, kind of a big one, federal pound you in the ass prison, the potential for bad optics before a jury in court if you're prosecuted for defending yourself if you believe that study from the last video. Now that you're all convinced it's a terrible idea to use an AR-15 for home defense, let's bring some balance back to the force. Huge pro, the AR-15 best possible home defense firearm. I'll smash this up into a fine pro paste and I'll baby bird it into your little gullet one tiny pro at a time. Let's start with a myth or rather a misconception. I had a conversation with a female security guard at my building, by the way, if you're watching this right now, Toy, what's up girl? She said that she had a friend with an AR-15 but that she didn't want to shoot the AR-15 because she was worried about the massive recoil of the AR-15 rifle. AR guys out there laughing to themselves because we all know that the AR-15 is one of the lightest recoiling, easiest shooting firearms that you can run north of a 22 caliber rifle. I don't know shit about physics, but I speculate that because you're moving a very small projectile at a very high rate of speed and because the AR-15 uses very little reciprocating mass with a huge recoil spring and buffer built into the stock, the AR-15 hits softer than a Pablo Cruz hook. God, this is becoming like an unofficial Yacht Rock reference episode. Another pro that I think goes unappreciated as an urban legend is the fact that the AR-15 will not go through your wall, through your living room, through the next wall, through all of your children's skulls, through your exterior wall, into your neighbor's house, through their dog, right before breaking the time-space continuum and killing JFK in an alternative universe in 1964 Dallas. 
I think that people look at the AR-15 when they hear mainstream media news stories about it, and the politicians who talk about it think it's some kind of artillery piece, not just a hopped up 22, which is what it is. Look at it this way. A shotgun slug weighs one ounce. A nine millimeter bullet can weigh up to about 150 grains or a third of an ounce. The common 55 grain M193 round fired by the AR-15 is half to a third of the weight of a nine millimeter bullet, which is itself a quarter to a third of the weight of a shotgun slug. An analogy I like to use, even if it's probably not accurate because I went to law school, not math school, you got a brick wall, right? You got a semi truck going 50 miles an hour, you got a Pontiac Aztec going 90 miles an hour, and you got a Ducati Monster going 160 miles an hour. Which one of those vehicles is going to go through the brick wall? Definitely the semi, right? Probably the Aztec and maybe the Ducati. Maybe not but it's definitely going to at least look like somebody put a motorcycle on a pony keg of marinara sauce into a cement mixer and fired it into the wall. The point is, AR-15 rounds are really tiny and they move really fast. They derive their power from speed and fragmentation or breaking up inside of a target when they're moving faster than 2,500 feet per second, which is the speed it needs to be going, the round, in order for it to break up. Shotgun slugs, handgun bullets, they're slower, but they're also heavier. And I would say that the AR-15 is better than a shotgun or a handgun for firing inside of a house. And I have absolutely 100% seen 9mm frangible ammunition pass through sheetrock and exterior walls without even breaking up as advertised multiple times. If you ever go to Thunder Ranch, ask to see how many holes are in the back of the shoot house. And that's all using frangible ammunition. For that matter, my Louisiana brethren at Gun Talk Media did an excellent series of penetration and wall tests that showed that the AR-15 does not penetrate through a house the way handgun rounds or some shotgun rounds do. In those tests, even a 380 round penetrated more than the AR-15 did. Wow. Okay, for everybody who says that's only a 380? Next pro, rifles are more accurate than pistols. Any long gun is going to be easier to control and easier to shoot more accurately with three or four points of contact on the gun. It's not only easier to control, but it's easier to hit what you're aiming at. Just about any rifle is going to be more accurate than just about any handgun. I promise you that and we can leave it there because that's an easy one. Next pro, lower recoil. As I mentioned earlier, the AR-15 will have less felt recoil than many guns, including centerfire pistols. I know it's probably hard to believe it's different types of recoil, but in my opinion, absolutely true. And the AR-15 super pleasant to shoot. Shotguns, forget about it. You'll be more accurate with a shotgun than a handgun, but shotguns recoil substantially more. I'm talking comparing Arbor Mist to Moonshine when you're talking AR-15 versus shotgun. Next pro, high capacity and high rate of fire. Most handguns limited to about 15, 17 rounds of capacity with a lot of exceptions like extended magazines, whatever. And the capacity is usually limited to no more than eight rounds in a shotgun. The standard AR mag gets you 30 rounds. On top of that, your rate of fire is going to be substantially higher with an AR-15. You could probably shoot all 30 rounds from an AR faster and more accurately than you could peel off eight rounds from a 12 gauge or 15 rounds from a handgun, and you won't feel like you fell down a flight of stairs when you're done. Plus, topping off an AR-15 takes a couple of seconds while completely reloading a shotgun could take a novice damn near a whole minute. I'm not saying that I think it's likely that you're gonna have to crank off three mags from an AR-15 to defend your home, unless you live in Detroit, Chicago or I guess New Orleans, but it's still an important point to bring up. So let's recap. Cons of the AR-15. Greater chance you're going to prison, maybe, if you believe that study. Pros of the AR-15. Lighter recoiling, easier to shoot more accurately, safer to shoot in your house, higher capacity, greater rate of fire. Now that we've established that the AR-15 is the worst gun for defending your home, but then re-established it as the best gun for defending your home. Let's talk about a few other negatives. The biggest concern that I have if I'm recommending the AR-15 to someone else, especially a beginner or a novice, it's a little complicated. Relative to other military style rifles, it's actually rather simple, but when compared to a handgun or say a pump shotgun, 
it is quite tricky. The manual of arms, such as loading and charging the gun, clearing malfunctions, charging handles, bolt release, safety lever, forward assist, on and on and on. I get John McCain caliber Vietnam flashbacks thinking about trying to teach my mom how to play that stupid tennis game for Nintendo Wii, which was as easy as it gets. I can't possibly imagine Connie either intuitively learning how to use an AR-15 or alternatively getting training for it. Can you picture Connie, the queen of Chardonnay at a three-day Thunder Ranch urban rifle course, running the Punisher while Clint threatens to stab her in the neck? Yeah, I mean, I guess that actually would be fun, not gonna lie. Millions, millions of views. And we haven't even gotten into offset. If you don't know what offset is, think about it like if I took your handgun and I made your sights three or four inches tall. That's what you get with an AR-15. The sights are going to be about three or four inches taller than the bore, and that will obviously affect your point of aim, point of impact in close quarters. Is offset going to make or break you inside of your house? Probably not. But again, it's just another facet of the AR-15 that even AR-15 owners, for the most part, aren't really aware of. Speaking of, you buy a Glock and a box of ammo from Academy, you come home, you watch a couple friends reruns, you have a Klondike bar, and you're done. With the AR, you've got to at least pick up some sort of sighting system, or you could just guess, I suppose, not mount any optics at all. I mean, you are just sending it down the hallway, probably, but I think everyone agrees that getting some optics and or a sight and or a sling and or a flashlight are very important, and maybe I'll make a video about that some other time for beginners. The point I'm driving at is that the AR can be a tricky platform for beginners and even novices. Another con, it's heavier than a handgun. It takes two hands to operate. It's longer and less maneuverable inside your house. It's a little bit of a clunkier platform. And good God, is it ever loud, especially indoors. That's not to say that a handgun isn't loud, but I think Clint did a great job of explaining what it's like when you shoot a rifle off in your house. Now imagine shooting that bitch in that hallway without no ear pro. You look like Elmer Fudd in a Bugs Bunny movie smack the tree. Here's what happens like if you shoot that shit, this is what happens immediately after you pull the trigger. Bang! Ah! In your ear for about two weeks. You could always get a suppressor, but now that's more money, more weight, more length, more complexity, more shit you gotta research, and a tax stamp, right? Do I firmly believe that an AR-15 is the best possible firearm you can use for home defense? Absolutely. Shotguns are great too. Handguns? Maybe not so much, but better than nothing. And they are simple. Do I believe that a jet is the best way to get across the country? I do. But if I have to bring myself to Las Vegas right this second, I'm probably just going to hop in my 1989 Toyota Turso hatchback instead of going to flight school, having an Embraer delivered to my house, and flying myself over there. You get the point. It's easy to just get a pistol and call it a day, even if it's not the best option. You're done. AR-15s, they take skill, they take research, they take training, probably more money, but if you've got the means and you've got the desire, the AR-15 is an excellent gun for home defense. In my opinion, all the cons aside. Did you enjoy this video? I certainly enjoyed making it and talking with you about it. Consider subscribing. This is my personal channel. I'm doing a little bit more content on this channel, leaning towards the legal and practical issues of gun ownership, so the content's gonna be slightly different than what you see on TFB TV. Plus, we've got that stupid mailroom, which I guess I need to do. Thanks again for watching. Take care.